not even to the campground yet, but I just saw the mountain. <laughs> Looks great. This is called the Tote Road. To go from the south gate of the park to the north gate could take two hours on this dirt road. And it's mostly just this one road, except there's a bit of a road that goes the other direction, but not all the way. There's no loop. There's number five, and I'm number six. I'm here. Oh my gosh, a stream. Oh, I like it. This is lean to site number six. Amazing that there's a stream there. Oh, there's firewood here and I just bought some. And there's my little fire ring. It's a warm September day. I just drove more than four hours and there's this little brook here and I feel a cool air from there. There's my lean-to. When I parked my car, I could see there's a person uh, over there, sort of through the trees at the next one. My car has to park there, and then over the other way, I can see there's the lane two number five, and nobody's there as of yet. And then kind of ways farther, I can see lane two number four, which looked good too. They all look good. This campsite is so nice, I could stay here the rest of the afternoon. It's almost five o'clock and I have a wonderful meal planned. But it's warm and I feel so excited. Site five is also next to the brook. Number four is a little farther from the brook, but you could walk right over to it. There in front of me, you can see lean to number four, but site three Number three was a short walk from the parking spot. Lane two is one and two are close to the road and not very close to the brook. This is my campground and I've driven to the stump pond. You come a short ways on a small path. To a viewing area. This is the kind of area where you could stay all day and all night and possibly not see anything. I've been making my way along looking for viewpoints and I've come all the way back to the gatehouse. This is Togue Pond, one of the ponds that has a canoe. So I wish I had gotten here a little earlier, but at least the sky is orange. The sunset, the full moon, the loons were magnificent. And now I am heading back towards my campsite.
It is around 5.30 in the morning. I am up for dawn patrol and I've driven to the gate because that's near where I have a viewpoint. And the gate's closed because it doesn't open until six and there's a line of cars waiting outside and those are the, the day hikers waiting to get in to get a good parking spot. But I guess I'm gonna backpack it over to the pond to see the moon set. no more moon and now the gate is open so go back get my car oh my I thought I missed the sunrise but nope due to hazy conditions it's glowing like an orange ball get the camera That is a spectacular mountain. The way it's so flat all around and then it rises up. There's a loon. But I'm really far away from it. They look funny when they fly. I'm tired of rowing this boat. I need to get back to shore and go have something to eat. I'm just over here making some pancakes and there's a guy in a wetsuit going to go swim in that pond. He's just right there. Breakfast is served. I am super hungry. Well, I guess the next logical thing to do is drive deeper into the park because tonight I stay at a different campsite, Katahdin Stream Campground. Uh, but I can't check in till 1 and it's now almost 11. It's going to take a while to get there, so I might as well just 
drive along, see what I see. This is the A-Ball Falls Trail. This is my first uphill trail since my injury. I feel weak. But we're all going to be weak if we're not strong. You have to do something to be strong. It seems to me, as you get older, you have to do more. It can be slower, but you don't get to do just nothing. <laughs> of course, you don't have to hike. You could do exercises. I have walked about half an hour and I hear water. Looks nice. And over there I see quite the drop off. Like a spa. I've actually never been to a spa because they're so expensive. Just waterfalls, I guess. I am now coming back into Abel Campground from the Abel Falls Trail. And the first thing I see is these couple of lean tos Let's have a quick look. The first one is number nine next to the brook. Firing beautiful rocks and this is the last one. So some privacy. However, the next one is right there. And that next one is number 10. Also quite nice because it's just a little bit off the uh, little road, but honestly, they're all pretty nice. Number 11 is nice. It is the closest to the Able Trail, which is one way to go up to Katahdin Baxter Peak. Number 12 is good too. Same thing on this outer circle, a little farther from the brook, right next to Able Trail, but decent amount of privacy and kind of nice. And just walking down the road back to my car. Here's an example of a tent site. That tent site is sort of in the middle of this circle. Number 18 is set back a ways, long driveway. Yesterday when I arrived, they were working on that kiosk. And I also see this massive bear hang. Katahdin Stream because here we are at Katahdin Stream Campground. In the background you can see the little entry road coming in here. This would be my lean-to for the night, number four. And it's right next to Katahdin Stream. Here is the stream. And here is my campsite. I have sort of the end spot and then you can see like looking there is be the next one over and then beyond that is the next one over. Across the woods, if I really look hard back in there, there's like a tent or something over there. Here is seven, there's eight, and then the little road. Now look at that one, number 23, and um, you would have a tent or some kind of truck. 
I looked at that sign again and it said check in over this bridge. Okay, well that was good because he gave me a lot of advice about where to go this evening. Kidney Pond. It is three o'clock. I am very, very tired. And I thought I would use this part of the afternoon to cook a meal. I'm going to try to use the Dutch oven to make cornbread casserole. I'm not trying to be all fake woodsman here. I honestly, I always think this wood stuff is interesting and it's not easy. so cool. You could make this with barbecue chicken, but I'm going veg today. So I've got my onion, my zucchini, kale, Swiss chard. In here is an egg for the cornbread mix, which is over there. And then we have some corn. Also, there's a little bit of creamed corn, grilled corn. In this tomato sauce, over here I've got beans and spices. Let's go. It may look like my fire is going well, but I've had to work on it quite a lot. The wood's not burning well. So I'm going to give myself a chance by sauteing vegetables while my fire gets going. And then I'll still use the Dutch oven to bake the cornbread over the top. Put on the lid, and then we put on hot coals. Careful, careful. It smells really nice. The kitchen is right by the stream. I think I better check it. Oh, wow! Yes. Where does this have to go? Uh-oh, sound of a helicopter. That could mean someone got injured and had to be rescued. Mmm. I ate the entire thing. I'm all cleaned up, ready to put out my fire so that I can go look at the pond. cabin people, you know? Are they over there having wine and lobsters? I don't know. Do they do this every year? How do they know about this place? I smell the camp smoke. These biting flies are horrible. It hurts a lot. It's kind of getting dark. There's another one on the outside of the lane too. I am 
I'm at the Dicey Pond parking lot at 5.48 a.m. This could only be better if I had a cup of coffee in my hand, uh, but that will have to wait. And what interests me over here is that sign, the little blue one. No doubt this little pond freezes over in the winter and skiers go right across it. All right, I've been out here a long time and I'm hungry. This one beautiful tree is just a hint of what is soon to come next month. The fish are like nibbling on me. Is that is that good or bad? Oh. Nature. So much nature. Well, this is nice, but it's time to continue on to the other road towards Roaring Brook Campground. Wow. And there's a heron. Do you see that? Could this be any more beautiful? I'm literally just driving down a road. Right there is the big parking lot. And here's my sight. And I'm fine with it. I don't need a fancy campsite right now. I just need a cool place to rest. And it's too hot. It's uh, 80 or more. And the sun is just coming across here. I'm in the last bit of shade under my tarp. The heat at Site 24 is beating me down. I'm gonna go to the babbling brook, get some water, maybe see a few campsites along the way. Site 25 is the last one on this section. The road is over there, 
The offices are over there. Site 23 has a more cozy feel to it. Here is Site 22. Coming around the corner, 21, tent site. Oh, people park in that parking lot and then walk out to their walk-in sites. 10 is a short walk from your car, but looks nice back there. 9, 8, 7, 6, all in a row. Firing and the brook. Is it roaring? The three roaring brook. Number four appears to have a large buffer of woods in the shade right over there. Neighbor five to the right. Firing. Same old lane two. Nice. Right next to the roaring brook. Oh, wow. going to try to make pizza in my Dutch oven. First thing to do is light the coals and make sure my fire is going. Pizza dough from the market. Pizza sauce, mozzarella, ricotta, pepperoni, and olive oil. I'm going to pre-cook it a little bit. Time check, 4.09. Let's give it five minutes, not too long. Flip it. Good, good, good. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Okay, pizza one definitely looks kind of wonky, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna taste good. And because I have more ingredients, I'm just gonna make another one. And the base, base cooked, flipping, good idea. Still too hot to eat, but I am probably gonna eat this one too. <laughs> On my way to Sandy Stream Pond, I stopped by the ranger again 
to confirm there'd be a canoe out there and he said nope so now i'm back in my car to put my life jacket and water stuff away but he said i should still do a little hike because there might be a moose that's the thing to say isn't it so A giant young man just offered to carry me back. That was hilarious. What a nice guy. And funny. So funny. This is my first ever night hike. That funny guy and his nice friends, they saw a moose. They just came back and passed by my tent site and here I am by myself in the dark with a red lamp brushing my teeth. And I said, did you see the moose? And they said, yeah. And they were so excited and ah, good for them. It's Friday. I'm going home and there are many hikers starting their day. I can't not go to that pond one last time before my big drive. It's so nice out here. This is called Big Rock Viewpoint. I didn't make it this far yesterday. Wish I could just stay on this rock for about two days. So what did you hike? Yes, yesterday we went up the Helon Kayla Trail to the Knife's Edge, across the Knife's Edge to Baxter Peak, down to the Saddle Trail, and back to our campsite at Roaring Brook. <laughs>
What time did you start? <laughs> six thirty. We started at six thirty, <laughs> and we got out at uh, seven. We were out with headlamps. It was a long hike, but it was great. It's been nice to talk to some people. I don't video every conversation unless I ask them, but I wish I could have videoed every ranger conversation because they're some interesting people and they all have a story and they all have different moods and views about everything. And they'll answer your question, but sometimes they don't give you more information than what you asked for. So if you don't know what to ask, you might not find out, uh, but they will certainly tell you the rules. That was kind of funny when we were sitting here and the guy mentioned Baxter Peak being that rocky one kind of set behind. And this whole time I've been videoing these two front mountains thinking those are the big mountains I would have hiked. So fun. Very hard to leave the big rock, but it's time to go. It's time to check out. This trip is over. <laughs> Bye, Moose.